Good, Good afternoon, nice. everyone, and welcome to, um, along to this session, which is a bit of a, <coughs> a sort of a, a fantasy session, really, for me that has that is now here. And I'm sorry that Katie Soar couldn't be here this afternoon to to um, help enjoy this and contribute her paper. But nonetheless, we've got a range of really fascinating responses to the the abstract um, that we sent to Ellen the year. Um, and I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm still not quite sure exactly what, if anything, I want to achieve from this session today. I think for me, um, I find Hookland, the place, the concept, something that's um, that really resonates with me. Um, perhaps it's something that resonates with prehistorians. There's certainly quite a few prehistorians in the audience today um, who I think see something in Hookland that maybe really talks to our interest in the in the the research and, and what we and, and what we do maybe in more in our, our day jobs. Um, but I think I think David you kind of recently asked on Twitter about archaeologists and how they responded to what you do and I think you've probably got a really good range of yeah. responses as well. So blown away by it. Yeah, yeah. So it's whether when you anticipate when you started off or when you know you, you thought, yeah, this is something archaeologists might be interested in. There may be an archaeology of Hookland. Maybe you didn't see going that way, but that's one of the wonders of what you do. Um, Talking about how archaeology fit with life from the start. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. I should have guessed. So I, I wouldn't anticipate that anymore. Um, yeah. So I mean, the other thing, I, and so not everyone here today is specifically talking about Hookland, but there are various. I think there's. Is there any more seats? I think there's maybe one more spare seat down there. If you can squeeze in there. Oh. I think it's literally standing. Well, don't take my seat, please. Standing only one. Way. So this is fantastic. So if, yeah, I think for. For me, um, there are contributions that are not necessarily just about Hookland, but they're about, and I, I hesitate, I don't use this in a, a negative way, they're about imaginary places. But yet, in a sense, and this is very cheesy, but, but the past prehistory is an imaginary place. You know, the, the accounts that we write about, um, in my case, the Neolithic period, are essentially fictions about a past that we can never really know, a past that doesn't exist anymore. And so in a sense, we, do, we try and enchant the kind of the broken pottery and the postals and those other bits and pieces into life. And I think actually that Hoogland can teach us something as archaeologists about how we write about the past, how we think about the past, eh, and about, about our investigations. And so it's only right that perhaps also some archaeologists starting to think about excavating Hoogland, carrying out fieldwork in Hoogland, and investigating um, its darkest corners as well as some of its more enlightened bright spots. So hopefully today we'll have a kind of range of different um, papers which will explore issues that were raised in the abstract for the session. And Hopefully there'll be some mutually beneficial chat amongst us all um, during the course of the day. But there's not any kind of high mighty agenda. I've I've done with this tag of doing the serious stuff. Um, <laughs> because I've already had a round table in genetics and then a session on nationalism this morning. Um, but of course, Hoogland also plays an, impor an important part in the, the important um, conversations we're having about the future of our country just now as well and beyond. So there's something also there to sort of speak against those kind of na raw nationalisms that as archaeologists were so good at um, addressing.